We're going. We don't need wires. So the thing is, you live in a lovely house on a terrace street with only on-street parking, and you want an electric car, and you go, well, I can't have an electric car because I can't plug it in. I can't have a wire draping out the bedroom window and plugged into the car because Mrs. Wiggins next door, she's going to catch her neck in it, and it's going to be awful. Of course you can't. Well, this thing that I'm standing on is not actually cooking my feet. This is an inductive charging plate. This can be set into the road, not even into the road, under the road and it will charge your car when you park over the top of it. It's absolutely amazing. This is called wireless charging, inductive charging, and I've come along here today to find out all about it. The future of electric vehicles is exciting, and how electric vehicles are charged in the future will be key to their success and growth. With stationary wireless electric vehicle charging, you simply park as you would normally and charge up. Once parked in a charging bay, charging is initiated and power is transferred wirelessly from a ground-based charging pad to a similar pad on the electric vehicle. So Nick, as you rightly reminded me earlier on, the Delta is my favourite electric <laughs> vehicle of all time, <laughs> bar none. But then this is a new step for it, yeah, because last time I saw this car, you didn't have yeah. the, the, in, the inductive charging system. So can you just explain quickly how, because you've used it, how complicated yeah. it is to use? Uh, well, it isn't, is the simple answer right. to that question. It's utterly straightforward. Right. Uh, literally, um, roll up to the pad. Yeah. Um, as you then roll over the pad, there's an alignment bar that builds. Uh, so you know when you're in the in the zone, um, and then when you're in auto mode, all you have to do is pull the handbrake on and key off, right? And that's it. It will start charging. So, the battery, so you can so. tell from use then that it's charging as fast as it would if you just plugged it oh, in. Yeah, absolutely. It make yes. any difference. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, we have the indicator there. We're limiting it to 2.2 kilowatts today, right. Just because of the power supply we've got available to us from the hotel. But yeah. What seems like a relatively small step is seven kilowatts. Right. When we're charging at seven kilowatts, even a battery pack of this size is then four hours. So this really, make, if this was everywhere we parked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one at home, one at work. Yeah. Then, yeah, you hardly need anything else. I've assumed that there would be an enormous power loss, but I sort of thought, well, it's still worth it for the convenience. But is that the case? Yeah, no, there's not at all. And I think if you if you think of a, um, a plug-in system, you know, a conductive system from the plug in the wall, so that the efficiency of those is somewhere around 85 to 95 percent depending on how much money you want to spend yeah. you know, that sort of thing. and we're in a similar position really yeah. and what that means is that we're comparable to a plug wow um, so there's no there's no more loss than, than if you plug it in the wall in that sense not really no right. um, but then the other thing is you know it, and it's based purely on ignorance really is what is going on between those two plates and what happens if you put your hand in there yeah, fuel. so if you put any metallic objects ferromagnetic objects in there that they will heat up um, so we have fine object detection, both living object detection as well as um, metallic object detection. The system um, basically senses, for example, a metallic object yeah. and then turns the power off um, and then notifies the user. I think people en envisaged a, a pad in the ground in a car park, there's no car there, and there's this phenomenal amount of energy and magnetic energy and electricity coming out of it all the time. Yeah, no, there's not at all. The normal operation of the vehicle, the vehicle comes in to the um, parking proximity into the car park, makes a connection wirelessly with the, um, with the vehicle and the base pad. Um, they, they start to couple and then there's feedback to the driver and then the full power will be delivered. I mean, I think that's an important thing for people to understand is that, you know, if you shove something in the way, it will switch off anyway, so it doesn't... That's right. And how close do you have to be to, to get it to work? So what we say to the drivers is as long as you can park between the two white lines of, of the car park, you should, you're good to go. Yeah. Someone asked, uh, is there moving parts? I think they envisage like huge spinning batteries on the ground. No, the so it's, it's purely working on the, the phenomenon of um, that electricity and magnetism coexist. So you start off low frequency AC from the wall, high frequency AC into the coil, high frequency AC induced on the car, and then off converted back to DC into the batteries. So it's quite magical, but yeah. it's, um, yeah. it's the 
the uh, attributes of power, you know, electricity and magnetism yeah. coexisting. Yeah, and that, I mean, that is the interesting thing, the kind of long-term effect is that, is that if you have a, basically the strings of charges along main roads, mm -hmm. an electric car could have it doesn't. It could have like a battery that gives it twenty miles range. Yeah, exactly. A very small battery, very yeah. lightweight. You just do the last mile on the battery, yeah. or, or the jumps between. Yeah. And as the infrastructure builds out, you could. And I think it's it's important that we, if we think about shifting the emphasis from having a, a lot of storage in the car, which is heavy, it's slow to charge, expensive, um, it's expensive. It changes the vehicle dynamics. And if you change the emphasis around and say, okay, why don't we leave the energy in the grid? Yeah. And and take it on demand, as it were, and that's what we talk about with the dynamic, you, know, you just put the energy into the car as it's needed, yeah. um, and then you shift the cost from the battery, which has got a short life, yeah. uh, and all the you know, negative attributes into, into a, um, an infrastructure. So I think it's fair to say that this wireless charging technology is pretty amazing. It took my breath away. I'm really, really impressed with it. I'm really excited about it. If you think of things like the car sharing schemes we saw in Berlin, if you think that you park your car in on the street in Berlin, you just get out and leave it and you go off and do whatever you're doing, while it's parked there, it's charging all the time. Absolutely brilliant stuff. If you think of how wireless technology has taken off in the last 20 years, phones, Wi-Fi, and now electric car charging. I mean, it makes so much sense. It's brilliant. I really want an inductive charging plate at my house now. Join us on Fully Charged again next time when we'll be looking at some contentious new technology.